I wanted to take a moment to talk about the study of Jones and Harris, 1957, because many people get confused by this study, and I think it's that they get bogged down in the details. When it's important to take a step back and really think about what was the purpose of this research and what did we learn from it. And the purpose was to demonstrate the fundamental aspect of the fundamental attribution error. And so why is fundamental is not necessarily based on its pervasiveness, but more so uh, the power of the fundamental attribution error to override logic in the attribution process. We talked in chapter one about the pitfalls of relying on personal experience to guide our understanding of human nature and how personal experience can be selective and limited and potentially biased. And this correspondence bias or this fundamental attribution error is one hallmark uh, example of this. And this theory suggests that people in their everyday um, interactions with others and how they understand human behavior is much more similar to the ways in which personality psychologists think rather than the ways in which social psychologists think. Um, so from a personality perspective, you are focused on the individual. What is it about this individual that makes them different and unique and motivates their behavior? And so the argument is that most people think along these lines. So when we observe the behaviors of others, we are focused on the individual. And we seek to understand their behavior uh, through a reliance on individual dispositions. And so why did this person behave in this way? Well, it is something about them, something internal to them that motivated or drove this behavior. So something about their abilities or lack thereof, their motivations, their core personality led to this particular behavior rather than something about uh, the larger context uh, or something external to the individual. This theory argues that if a student comes in late to my class, that as I observe this behavior and attempt to understand or explain it, that I would look to the individual. And so I would think to myself, why did this student come late to class? Well, it's something about them that led to their lateness, something internal to them. Uh, they are unmotivated, or lazy or irresponsible, and that is why they are late to class, rather than me thinking about the situational factors that may have contributed to their lateness. So I'm less likely to think this student is late because of traffic or the availability of parking, etc. cetera. Uh, regardless of which of these is most likely to be the case in this particular scenario, I'm going to have a bias towards these internal or dispositional attributions. And so the classic study of Jones and Harris uh, demonstrates this fundamental attribution error. In this study, participants are asked to read persuasive essays either for or against Fidel Castro. Participants are informed that the essays were written by students who had taken part in a previous version of this study. The participants are randomly assigned to conditions, and the conditions vary the type of information that participants are given regarding the writer of the persuasive essay or the persuasive speech. In the chosen condition, participants are told that the writer of the speech got to choose the stance of that speech. So they got to choose whether they wanted to write a pro-Castro speech or an anti-Castro speech. And the assigned condition, these participants are told that the writer of the speech was assigned a particular stance. So they didn't get to pick whether they wanted to write a pro-Castro or anti-Castro speech. Instead, they were told, you have to write a pro-Castro speech or you have to write an anti-Castro speech. 
speech. After reading and evaluating the speeches, the participants are asked to estimate the pro-Castro attitude of the speech writer. So after reading this person's speech, the participants are asked, what do you think is the underlying attitude of the speech writer towards Fidel Castro? So on the left side of the graph, these results make sense. If someone freely chooses to write a speech in favor of Fidel Castro, that very likely tells us something about that particular person's attitude towards Fidel Castro. The same for if someone freely chooses to write a speech against Fidel Castro. That likely tells us something about their internal underlying attitude. But look at the results on the right side of the graph. This is a condition in which participants were told that the stance of the essay or the speech was assigned. And yet still, we find that those who read the pro-Castro speech assumed that the writer had a pro-Castro stance, even though the stance of the speech was assigned. So what we should see here are these two bars, the purple and the orange, um, are similar in height, but in fact, uh, they are not, suggesting that participants here, after reading the essays, are assuming that that behavior, right, of, of writing the essay tells us something about the internal attitudes of the speech writers, despite the fact that there was this very strong situational influence that determined the stance of the speech. And it wasn't something internal about their personal attitudes. Instead, it was that the stance of the speech was assigned. So even when we are explicitly told that there was an external or situational factor that determines someone's behavior, still we find that people are committing the fundamental attribution error, that they still believe that observing someone's behavior tells them something about who that person is internally. So this demonstrates the fundamental nature of this particular bias. What this suggests is that if you are that student who comes in late to class and you want me to form a situational attribution, right? you don't want me to think that you are unmotivated or irresponsible. And so you tell me, hey, I am late not because I'm irresponsible, but instead because of traffic or the availability of parking. What the Jones and Harris study suggests is that that information may do little to alter this fundamental attribution error. It may do little to alter my bias towards a dispositional internal attribution.